Good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, I am bringing you the fifth and final round of the Players' Cup Week 1 from this past weekend. Now, I've shown you all the previous games, and I'm going to spoil them in a minute, so if you haven't watched them, check the links in the description. But round 1, I had a bye. Round 2, I lost to Blacephalon with luck and bad play and misclicking, and it was a terrible game. Round 3, I managed to squeak past Blacephalon in a game that was far more difficult than it should have been. And then in round 4, I managed to beat Pikachu and Zekrom, in a game that was far more difficult than it should have been. Game 1 I drew very, very, very badly. Got rid of all my extra drill early game. And took a loss to what should be my best matchup I've had in years of any deck. But I made it all the way to round 5. And this is it, right? This is winning in. If I win, I'm into the next round. And I'm playing against Zashian ADP. I don't like this matchup. This is a very difficult matchup for my deck. The general theory is this. If I can hit ADP, Arcus and Alga and Palkia, before they use their GX attack, then they use their GX attack and they win in three turns because they're taking two prizes per KO. So I need to hit ADP before it uses the GX attack. If I don't, I lose. And then I've got three turns and I need to finish ADP, take a two prize KO and a one prize KO. If I do that, I can win, but my opponent is playing multiple Big Charm and multiple Metal Saucer, which means, it or Metal Frying Pan, sorry, or they are playing Metal Saucer as well. So that is going to make it much more difficult for me to get a one-hit KO on a Zashian. So I am really hoping they bench the Dene. It's also worth pointing out, they do play Energy Switch. So if they go second, they can get the turn one GX attack, and that's kind of terrifying. Never mind. Give it a go, eh? I'll be honest with you. This is my winning in. I wanted a better matchup. I may or may not have been texting my wife telling her how I'm going to lose. So I'm not feeling good about this game, but I do know what I need to do here. I know the route to victory. I know that the way I win this game is by hitting ADP before they get the GX attack off and then getting a free prize, two prize, one prize KO. And it's all about the prize race here, right? ADP's GX attack says that for the rest of the game, they take an ev extra prize every time they take a KO. So once they use that, they're three turns away from winning. Also, and this is a bit of a theme, how do I always not have a draw supporter in my hand at the beginning of the game? Seriously, I play eight. That should be enough. The good news is I am playing a free freeze have striker line. So there's me Blitzel. And we're rolling. We do not want to play to Dene in this particular matchup. Because, oh, might as well go Drillba. Because the, the problem is, if we play to Dene, then that actually gives them... Actually, no, it's not a huge problem. Because it's still that plus two other KOs. So, no, I take it back. It's really not a big deal if I play to Dene. But it's still a bench space. I'd rather avoid it, if at all possible. So, not a phenomenal turn one, but one we can work with. What we really want next turn is we want a Hustle Belt. My opponent will hopefully end the turn with ADP in the active. That's what we want. And then we can just go for it from there. Now, my opponent could leave Jirachi in the active, and that's an awkward one for them. Because on the one hand, it gives me a KO. But on the other hand, it means I don't get the easy two-hit KO on ADP. And it is important that I get a hit on them before they use their GX attack. But then again, they've they've then got to get it in the active, and it, it gets kind of awkward. So they're using a quick bull here. One would imagine they're going for, well, it could be Zashin or it could be ADP, <laughs> which is basically their entire deck. But it is the ADP here, and it's hard to blame them. They're going to, I mean, what they really want here, and this is what's terrifying for me. If they get water energy, oh, Marnie, okay. Oh, yeah, no, that's terrible. I still don't have a supporter, and that is really becoming a theme here. But now I don't even have a Zeb Striker in hand, so I'm going to need some. I mean, the, the good news is I've got attackers. I've got a Drillber, I've got an Energy, I've got another Drillber, I've got a Spiritomb ready to go. But I need cards at some point. And like I say, th this is not... The thing is, I've played... Oh, I'm going to say probably about 200 games with this deck. Give or take, I probably played about 200 games with this deck, although the deck list does change around here and there. 
And it generally draws fine. There will be games you don't start with a supporter, but it's not supposed to be like two thirds of the time. Mathematically, that's not the case. I should be doing better than this. But I'm 3 1 and I've got a winning in. But then again, I'm drawing badly on my winning in. And the thing is, right, I go into this game thinking it's a bad matchup. I go into this game thinking that I'm not going to win. So the last thing I really want here is to start badly. Now, the good news is my opponent has left ADP in the active. Now, it's an awkward one because they kind of want the Jirachi and all, but it means like, oh, and I draw the Hustle Belt. It's not a supporter. I'd rather it was a supporter. But at least I can do some stuff. I can get the drill bed down. I can get the energy onto the other drill bed. And I can do a big attack here. So I'm going to get three prizes. Because one of two things is going to happen here. And both of them are in my favour. Either my opponent uses a GX attack. And then I KO it for three prizes. Spiritomb's already got everything it needs. Or they don't use a GX attack. And there's a free prize liability sitting on their bench. Of course, the other thing to bear in mind here, my opponent saw that my entire turn was bench drill, but attach energy hustle belt. And it's awkward, but there is an argument for them to just take down my spirit tomb. And just leave me with nothing on board. But then again, my opponent is probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking. He hasn't drawn a supporter yet. I know he plays a bunch. He's got a Blitzel on the bench so he can draw a Zeb Striker or a Great Ball into a Zeb Striker. So, but my opponent could try and knock out the Spiritomb here and lock me out the game. And it would lock me out the game. Now, my opponent can't see my hand, but I'm telling you now that if they knock out Spiritomb, they probably win. Now, we do see the Stellar Wish coming down. There's a Pokemon Catcher. Not what they want to use here. Because Spiritomb is the problem. Okay. I mean, presumably they're going after Blitzel or something like that. What they're trying to do... Oh, no, it would be... Sorry, it would be the Drill without any energy on. Because they're trying to make sure I don't get a KO. But, okay, right. We can maybe work with this. We can maybe work with this. We really want a Spiritomb. It's hard to know what to do here. The question is whether I bench the Jinx. Kind of wish I had. Because then we could start building up a second Spiritomb. Nope. Absolute garbage hand. Except it's not a garbage hand. Because I still don't have a supporter. Just the one so far. But now, what am I going to do? Like, I can Zeb Striker. But I lose my last two Hustle Belts. Two of my three remaining Rainbow Energy. I mean, I've got four energy that can pay both Pokemon's attacks cost. Sorry, five. Three of them are in my hand. So once again, I'm not really in a position to Zeb Striker. So I Anguish Cry, I take three prizes, but I've not really got... My board has only gotten better by... Popping an energy on the drill burr. What I needed there was a Zeb. And that's what I'm still looking for here is a Zeb Strike. Uh, is a Spiritomb. I want to get a Spiritomb so that I can energy hustle about. But last turn I could have got an extra energy on. Spiritomb with. Oh, extra damage. Spiritomb with five damage and a hustle belt KOs Zashin. And here's the thing if I bent Spiritomb last turn, attach a rainbow energy, building spike, two damage. Next turn, energy. Ability, and then maybe a second spirit tomb and a jinx. It's a lot to ask, but I've got the two energy in the hustle belt, so all I actually need is a second spirit tomb and a jinx. Then all of a sudden, I get a KO on a fresh Zashium, and that's the thing here. I have got to get a one prize KO and a two prize KO. That's what I need. It has got to happen. If I don't get a one prize and a two prize KO, I will lose this game. Because my opponent is going to take three consecutive KOs here. And that's a huge issue for me. I know they've only got one energy on the Zashian. I'm just assuming they're going to get Metal Saucer energy. They always do. It's like a Blacephalon deck. You can look at Blacephalon. And we've seen this in the previous rounds. You can look at a Blacephalon and go, well, you know, 
They don't have a Blacephalon on the field. They've got to get Blacephalon, free energy, welder switch. They're going to do it. There we go. They did it. So I just assume they're going to get that done. I just... I don't... I don't have a one-hit KO on a Zacian. And that's what I'm looking at right now. I don't have that one-hit KO. Now, Pokemon Catcher now would be a terrible time to play Pokemon Catcher. Uh, that's not great. But it's still not the end of the world. Because there's a fresh Zacian on the bench. I mean, to be honest, I want them to KO anything other than that spirit team in the active because boss's orders ability boom ko on the bench Zashian one prize to win the game but my opponent knows that so they take out the spirit team and, and like what do i have here what do i even do at this stage oh i've got a drillber great In enjoy your drillber and to be fair i can evolve it into excadrill but i'm two hit koing and a two hit ko loses me the game I mean, essentially here, I need to Fione and hope they stick up a single prize Pokemon. Or that they stick... I mean, if they don't stick up a single prize Pokemon, it's Zacian and maybe I two hit KO. But I didn't have a Spiritomb last turn. And again, it's it, it's several... It's turn after turn without a supporter. It's, it's drawing all of my Hustle Belt and energy... Off of the one supporter I played in the game. And then having to discard it with Zeb Striker. And let's be clear, a lot of this is deck construction. I moan about running out of Excadrill, but I'm playing three when I could be playing four. I moan about awkward discards. Well, yeah, you'd make your decks built around Zeb Striker. You cannot build a deck with a free free Zeb Striker line and not expect some awkward discards with Zeb Striker. That's not the way it works. Now, what I'm basically weighing up here is the possibility of trying to get a boss's orders. But I can't do it. I want boss's orders, but there's no point. So, yeah, it's too late. I need another attacker. And the thing here is I desperately need to start building up a Spiritomb... But I don't have time. That Spirit Tomb has got to take a two prize KO next turn. It's got to have five damage on it next turn. And the only way I do that is ability. I need to get three damage on it in a turn. So I need two Spirit Tomb and a Rainbow Energy and a Jinx. And it's not happening. So my opponent does stick up the other Zacian. That pretty much tells us what we need to know at this stage. It tells us that my opponent is going to KO with that Zacian. If I can get a two-hit KO here, I will still win the game. If I can get a two-hit KO, then I'm down to one prize. My opponent goes down to two, and then I can win the game next turn. But it's not going to happen. My opponent is going to have an out. So there's a hit on Zeb Striker, on Zashium. But I don't, I don't feel confident. If they've got a switch or an energy switch, which I'm assuming they're playing. Oh, no, I said earlier they're playing it. So a switch or an energy switch or anything along those lines. It doesn't even matter if the Zashian gets KO'd next turn. The only thing that matters is that my opponent prevents a two-prize KO. Without them to... There we go. There's the switch and that's it. That's game. Because my opponent now will get a KO on the Excadrill, and there's no way that I can take three prizes in a single turn. It's just not happening. There is no chance of that happening. So my opponent is going to win this game at this stage. And we might as well play it out. There's no real reason not to play it out. But the fact of the matter is, there is no way that I win this game. This game is out of it. And now he's even going to put a big charm on the Zashian, which is it's frankly overkill at this stage. If I'm honest with you, I'm out of the game. Both the Zashian are... I can take two prizes and then he'll win. There is literally no way back at this stage. I mean, maybe like a double crushing hammer that I don't play, followed by a one-hit KO on the Pokemon I can't KO. That would work. But the fact of the matter, and I know what this is, you can see me hesitating to try and put up an active Pokemon. I know this game is over. I know I've lost this game. 
I know that there is literally no way back. My opponent already has a Pokemon. And with an energy, they've got two Pokemon that can take a KO. It's too late in the game. And, you know, I'm glad that I'm trying, I suppose, but no. No way I'm going to win this game right now. So I take the damage onto Spiritomb. Hustle Bell. This is, this is all irrelevant. And this is classic. And I'm, I know I do, I do it. You can see me doing it right now. And I'm sure you've all done it as well. This is a classic example of I'm reaching. I am desperately, desperately... I'm going through my deck and I'm trying to think there must be a way out of this. Because I've, I've beaten at Dash in ADP with this deck many times. It's not a great matchup. It's probably about 50-50. But I know I can do it. And yeah, now my opponent literally just attacks for the win. Oh, they can't attack. Okay, so now, and again, this is even more spurious than last turn. But yeah. They can just retreat an energy. Even if I got a two-hit KO, they then just attack for the win. So, there is just... There is... It was never going to work. As soon as I couldn't get the one-hit KO on the two prize Ashium, that was game. So, I go into this matchup thinking it's a bad matchup. I lose game... And that was a fairly straightforward loss. That wasn't I drew nothing. That wasn't my opponent got silly lucky. That was just a fairly pedestrian straightforward loss so now we do the whole thing again now the good news is i have got a way way better hand i've actually got a supporter i've got a blitzel and a zeb striker and i've got myself a an energy and all that to attach so that's that's feeling pretty good Now I'm going to get myself a second Blitzel. And I'm going to go Spiritomb here. Because I'm basically thinking, dig, wassy, dig. Dig, wassy, dig. I know that the only realistic way I get a one-hit kill on a Zacian is with a five, end, five damage expert, uh, not expert battle, that was years ago, Hustle Belt Spiritomb. So I'm just going to go aggro Spiritomb this game. And I don't know if it's going to work. But I know that Excadrill does very little for me against my opponent's main Pokemon. It's great for taking out stuff like Tapu Finny and Jirachi and all of that. But that's not the way it's going, unfortunately. So, yeah. So what I need to do here is I just need to get as many Spiritomb out as I can. And just get damage on them. Probably play a Jinx. Get some Zeb Striker out. And just go for it. Now, my opponent does get the ADP, and they get the energy. Metal Saucer Energy Switch would be terrifying here. Because if my opponent gets their GX attack before I've got an attack off, I basically can't win. Because I then need to take... I've then basically got three turns to take six prizes, but there's no damage on the board. So once again, my opponent puts ADP into the active, and that means that I can take a hit on them. I can hit them, and that's good. I want to hit them. But at this stage, we are starting to look very, very similar to last game. Remember, last game, they put ADP up. I hit it with Spiritomb. I was feeling good, and then I just got bodied. And last game really wasn't that close. You know, last game, I was, I was really clutching a... a straws to try and win that game now can we get oh do we want fione not really it's not doing anything now except taking up a bent space so we don't want that what we want is spiritum okay that'll do sorry i don't know what happened to my voice then feeling a slight bit under the weather today but i'll, I'll be okay ladies and gentlemen i am here with you so now we get that we get a ditto down We've even got a Hustle Belt ready to roll. Do we, Zeb Striker? I think we do. 
because my opponent's not really going to do anything. So all I'm going to do beginning of next turn is Professor's Research anyway. There's nothing new that I'm going to put in the discard for Ordinary Rod, and I don't want that Excadrill. So that very much was the right play. Oh, and now we've got another Spiritomb. And not for nothing, we got a Rainbow Energy we can put on the Bench Spiritomb. So that's quite nice. Now... I'm not loving that play. Because as much as I want to build up the Spiritomb... Yeah, see, there's a Jinx. I quite like the idea of just, you know, trying to build up a 5 damage Spiritomb. But then again, I've got Rainbow Energy next turn. And you... Oh, okay. I've literally got it. I meant it was available in the deck. Now it's in my hand. And now I'm starting to think, maybe I can take down that Zashium. Because here's the thing, right? If I KO their ADP, like I did last turn, we're, we're just going in, we're going round and round again. Now, of course, the other thing that does need to be borne in mind here is that I do have Spiritomb on the bench that I can start rolling with. Maybe I can turn one of them into a 5 damage Spiritomb. But then again, also please remember that the 5 damage Spiritomb is only relevant if my opponent doesn't play. Oh my god, they've not played it. Okay, right. Now, at this stage, it's clear. Ah, oh, for goodness sake. What I need to do, my only real chance of winning this, is whack the rainbow energy on Spiritomb, use Building Spite, and try and boss his orders at Bent Zashium. Can anyone see the problem? I've drawn both my power pad. Haven't drawn a boss's orders! But I have drawn both my power pad. And that's really, really relevant. Because that ADP is not coming back into the active. That ADP is going to sit on the bench. I need to boss his orders. So I need to boss his orders this turn on the Zashium. And I need to boss his orders the ADP in future. And with both my power pad going down this early, it is the only... They're the only ones I'm going to have, right? They're the only two bosses orders I'm going to have. So now it's decision time. Do I want to go aggressive? Do I want to do this plan? And then I think, well, what am I going to do? The same thing I did last game. Try and get five damage onto a spirit tomb and hope they never draw into a big charm or a metal frying pan. Maybe that happens. But I honestly don't think it's going to. So we go for it. We go, and if this works, I am in. If this works, I am basically a boss's orders away from winning the game. Still don't have it. So we go again. And we've got a ditto down, so we can potentially have a third Zeb Striker if need be. Still don't have it, but we've got Zeb Striker. So we go again. And we are digging here. But if, if, if this works, if I can draw the boss's orders, this could swing the entire game. Oh, we got it. Okay. Right. Nice. That's good. We like this. Now we get the KO on Zashium. And now what does my opponent do? Because they don't have a Zashian down. They, not only have I gone and taken two prizes, but what are they attacking with? I mean, this turn, Tapu Fini, single energy KO. That's fine. But... Outside of that? I just need to get a single prize KO. And then I need a boss's orders onto ADP. And if they're going to attack with Tapu Fini, that's my single prize KO. And basically, I just need to draw my final... And it is my final boss's orders. There's only one left in the deck. But if I can get a single prize KO first... And my opponent's not playing any kind of healing or scooping up or any of that malarkey. That Zashian ADP is staying on the bench with the damage on. So if I draw into a boss's orders, I will win the game. Okay, so they're committing to Tapu Fini. And I mean, they've, they've got to get rid of it, right? That Spiritomb's hitting 220 damage right now. <laughs> Spiritomb is busted. Spiritomb's like genuinely legitimately busted. But, yeah, this is getting... um. This is getting down to the wire. <laughs> oh my goodness. So we do see an energy switch onto Jirachi. So my opponent's basically gone right. 
I still win in three KOs. So I'll take one with Tapu Fini, one with Jirachi, and my opponent doesn't even need Zacian here. Which incidentally means I need to try and get an Excadrill rolling because my Spiritomb can go down to Jirachi. Excadrill won't. But then there's three Spiritomb out and my opponent can just play Boss's Orders to take out a Spiritomb with a Jirachi. So, I mean, that their route here is pretty well settled. They're going to ignore Zacian and just go for their little Pokemon. And I've got basically two turns. This turn I KO Tapu Fini. Next turn I need Boss's Orders. But bearing in mind... I need to get off two attacks. I've got one attacker on the board and another attacker with enough damage once I add the rainbow energy which is in hand. So once I attach that rainbow energy to Spiritomb, I have got two attackers ready to go. Two attacks win the game. And unless I whiff boss's orders, I win. But look at my board. Treble Zeb Striker. And not for nothing, I haven't played my Dedenne yet. So, there is a, um, hopefully, please don't make me look stupid, Wossy. Hopefully, I'm going to leave a bench space open here so that I can bench a to Dene and draw even more. I'm trying to put myself in a position where I, I just don't lose. So, there goes the Razor Fin. There's the KO. We expect the KO. That KO doesn't matter. Now, these are, they're, they're parallel. They've, time I add the rainbow energy, now they've both got three damage on. I need a fourth damage on here, because three damage does 100, four damage does 130. So I've now got the KO on Tapu Fini. And now it's very simple. We are in deck thinning mode. Now we do want to play the Marnie here to try and slow my opponent down. We do want to play Super Odd. I don't think we do want to play Super Odd, you know. I'm trying to convince myself we do. Oh, yeah, for Fione. There we go. Fione might be relevant. You never know. But generally speaking, we're just looking for boss's orders. Now, here, we're literally just going to grab a basic we don't want, Spiritomb, just to get it out the deck. We want as few cards in the deck as possible. So we're building Spite onto that. Just to make sure we got the attackers. Honestly, that's, that Spiritomb is overkill. Because I either win next turn or I don't, right? My opponent is going to go down to two prizes. Next turn, they're going to win the game. Either I win next turn or I don't win next turn. All I really need to be doing here is just Zeb Strikering. Now, what I'm basically thinking here is, do I need to even use Zeb Striker this turn? And the answer is no. I have got the Dene in hand. Between the Dene and the Freeze Up Striker on my bench, I can draw my entire deck. Don't do it, Wassy. You don't need to do it. And I've got Boss's Orders in my deck. So what I've basically done at this stage is I've put myself in a position where I, I can't lose. As there is nothing on my bench my opponent can use to stall me. I've got a backup attacker when my attacker goes down. I've got a Boss's Orders in my deck. And I've got the ability to draw my entire deck. There is a tiny, tiny chance that my opponent can reset stamp me. And I don't draw into Boss's Orders or Dedene after drawing 13 cards. I suppose that is technically possible. Depending on how many Quick Ball and Great Ball are left in my deck, of course. But yeah... I mean, to be honest, last turn, there is a strong argument what I should have done was just Zeb Striker a bunch and just make sure I don't hit Boss's Orders. Like, don't discard it. And then just... Because at this stage, it's Boss's Orders for the win. I know it. My opponent knows it. And I've got free Zeb Striker down. And I'll be honest with you, right? I don't say this very often. I am genuinely proud of my play in this game. This is a bad matchup. It is a matchup I was not looking forward to. I was not feeling confident. I lost game one in fairly straightforward fashion. I completely changed up what we're doing game two. I went full ball Spiritomb. I went hyper aggressive. I built up the Zeb Striker. And I actually managed to put myself in a position to win. And if I draw boss's orders here, I win. Except I've got Dedene in hand. 
So, time I Dedane and free Zeb Striker, I will draw boss's orders. I cannot whiff boss's orders. I have won this game. We hit it off the Dedane, but even if we hadn't done, we would have hit it off of Zeb Striker. So now we play the boss's orders, do the maximum amount of damage, and somehow pull out a victory which I was not feeling good about. I did not think I was going to win that game. That was, like I say, it's not very often I sit here and go, I played that game well. But I'm sorry, I'm going to sit here and say, you know what, I did play that game really well. And honestly, we've seen the MO now. My opponent has seen what they need to do in order to win the game, and I've seen what I need to do in order to win the game. The question is going to become which of us is actually able to do that. Now, good news is I have once again drawn all right. I've got a Blitzel, I've got a Spiritomb, I've got a Great Ball, and I've got a Professor's Research as well as a Marnie. Oh, and a Jinx as well. And we're going to go Jinx here, right? Now, my opponent, unfortunately, does want to go first. They're going to try and get the turn 2 ADP, which is way easier when they go first. Because, and also, I mean, it means I can attack with Spiritomb, but I'm unlikely to do a huge amount of damage. <gasps> they don't have anything. They just used Intrepid Sword. Oh, I love this. So, oh, here's a decision. I think I have to Marnie here. Oh, and there's another Spiritomb. So... We're going to do what we did last game. Last game worked. We're going to go full bore aggro spiritomb. And we're going to cross our fingers and hope that it works. And we are going to Professor Sycamore. Professor's Research. It worked. Oh, I didn't get an energy. Oh, that's actually kind of upsetting. Never mind. I'll be honest with you. I'm slightly upset here. Now, we are going to Ominous whatever it's called, and we're going to move damage. We're building up one big Spiritomb on the bench. Yes, I would rather build up one big Spiritomb in the active, because here's the thing, right? If I put that energy, if I put the damage on Spiritomb in the active, and I draw a rainbow energy next turn, I get the KO on Zashium. But my opponent's got a fast, consistent deck. They're also sitting at 3-1. I don't need to go hyper aggro aggressive like I did last game. And if they don't bench and have a basic and I do hit a rainbow energy, I'm going to regret not doing it. But the fact of the matter is, my opponent is having a very slow... Oh my goodness, they still don't have anything. Even after... So turns out not mining them was a good idea. Okay, so my opponent's having a very bad game. And now, annoyingly, I could be a rainbow energy away from winning the game, but I don't regret that. I win this game by having multiple beefy Spiritomb. That's how I win this game. And that's how I'm going to play the game. No, I didn't go hyper full bore aggro. And I'm not upset that I didn't. I think this was the right thing to do. Incidentally, we're grabbing a drill bird because this is not an extra drill game. So we're just going to discard it. We're going to get rid of it. We don't need it. I don't really want to get rid of my ditto, but eh, needs must. And I hate to say it because of my love for Drillba and all things Excadrill, but we're going to discard another Drillba. Drillba and Excadrill, they're not good attackers against either Zashian or ADP. So what's the point in having them in the deck? Now, I'm kind of glad I whiffed the rainbow energy there. I feel kind of good about whiffing the rainbow energy. Because if I hadn't whiffed the rainbow energy, then... If I'd got the rainbow energy, then I could have won this turn. And I could have just ended the game here and now. But I don't want to end the game here and now. Well, no, sorry. I do want to end the game here and now, but it's too late. I've already given up the opportunity to do so. So what we're doing is we're moving damage off of the active to the bench. Oh, no. Up to the active. Either way, we're spreading our damage around. Because now, if my opponent... Puts a fresh Zashian active and gets a KO, I can still KO it. If my opponent somehow gets a fresh Zashian in the active and takes a KO, my Spiritomb on the bench can start doing damage. And while I'm doing that, I can quick ball for another Spiritomb and I can start building up a third good Spiritomb. And here's the thing, right? Okay, maybe that's why I needed Excadrill because that, that Dedene will go down. 
Oh, that is a very, very painful to Dene. Do you see how many cars they just had to discard? And at this stage of the game, they're not using their GX attack. The time for creation GX is over. They are not able to use their GX attack. It is too risky at this stage of the game. So now, I'm basically playing against a Zashian deck that's taking one prize per turn and isn't playing Jirachi, the Prism Star to take extra prizes. And I've got a Zeb Striker rolling... I've got, time this one goes down, still free Spiritomb and a Jinx, and another Blitz all ready to go. So I can legitimately be building up Spiritomb to one-hit KO Zashian. So my opponent does actually take the lead in terms of prizes, but make no mistake about it, this is a stage where I actually start thinking I'm going to make it to next week. I'm finally starting to think I am actually going to be in a position to get to week two. When I lost to Blacephalon, I was not feeling good because that should have been a good matchup. When I squeaked past the second Blacephalon, again, I still didn't feel good because that should have been a much, much more straightforward matchup. But I did get past it, and then I played what is essentially as good as near to an auto win as you're ever going to see for my deck. So it's not like I felt, oh, I've beaten a Pikachu and Zekrom. Now I can finally, finally start getting on a winning streak. What I've basically done at this stage in the tournament is beat my easiest matchup and squeak past a matchup which should have been very favorable. There's nothing to instill confidence until this game. Last game was one of the best games I've played in a very long time. I managed to pull out a win in a game where my opponent's deck did what it should have done. They got the turn two creation GX. They got a KO every turn after that. Their deck did what their deck was supposed to do. And yet I was still able to manipulate a victory. So, yeah, <laughs> I feel pretty good. And now I'm building up my Spiritomb on the bench. I'm taking two prizes. I've got one Zeb Striker out and another ready to go. And now what does my opponent do? They've got a zero energy Zashium. So it's not like they're ready to just come and start returning KOs. There is every possibility I can boss his orders and KO that bench Zashium next turn. Because I've got a second Spiritomb and a Jinx, then I can... Just roll from here. And my opponents KOing me with Jirachi that they did last game really is not going to work this game. I'm ahead on prizes. I am a deck built to trade with a KO every single turn. And you're not. That deck is built to withstand a hit with Zashian while KOing. They are not built to KO with Jirachi every turn. And they can, it's a two energy attack and they're playing four metal saucer. But my deck is built to do this and their deck is not. I am going to get a KO every turn if we do this. They are going to need five attackers and are only playing four metal saucer. They are going to run out of resources before I do. So we do see a Professor's Research coming down here for seven. There's a Pokemon Catcher finally ahead on Jinx. And I don't really want them to KO Jinx because Jinx is how I start building up my Spiritomb. But then along the same lines, it's not the end of the world. And also they're not one hit KOing Jinx. Now, the fact that my opponent just Metal Sourced onto a Jirachi tells me that they've basically given up on using Zashian this turn, and that makes me feel very, very confident. Because at this stage, the only way I'm basically losing this is if they can get multiple KOs with the same Zashian. Like with stuff like Metal Frying Pan. Metal Frying Pan doesn't protect a Jirachi. It does protect a Zashian, incidentally. It will stop me getting a one-hit KO. So there goes that one-hit KO. But I really don't mind here. They're taking one prize a turn. So if they're taking one prize a turn, I can just chill. And the other thing is, they're not decking me out here. I have got more prizes, more cards left in my deck than them. 
I've got Marnie left. I've got Pow Pad into Marnie. They're not decking me out. I'm going to use the Fighting Energy to retreat Jinx because I don't want Exadrill this game. And actually what they're doing is giving me extra turns to build up. So I'm going to have multiple giant Spiritombs rolling. And I put two Marnie back in my deck. And partly that is to cover myself. And partly that is my way of saying to my opponent, look, it's not going to work. You're not going to deck me out. They're going to have to, they're going to have to beat me in a traditional manner. Except I am set up for the prize race in a way that they're just not. Now I do need to be careful with my special energy. My, my basic energy can be recovered. I've got two ordinary rod. I've got a Brock's grit. I can get them back. But honestly, I'm feeling very, um, I'm feeling moderately confident here. If I'm honest with you, I'm feeling fairly confident. So, he gets a Metal Saucer onto Zashian here. He is building up a Zashian here, and there is a Metal Saucer on there. But, I can take out the Dene. I can take out Single Prize Pokemon. And I can, to be honest, I can two-hit KO Zashian. I don't really care. Like, if I two-hit KO Zashian and then take out the Dene, that's three hits to win. It takes my opponent five hits to win. That's not going to save the Dene. <laughs> Sorry, the Dene. That ain't going to save you. I've actually just drawn the energy for my Spirit Tomb. I've got a Second Zeb Striker. I've got Ordinary Rod. So I am feeling very, very confident about this game. And I'm not in a hurry to win. Obviously, I'd like to win. This is the final round. When I win, I can go and get some lunch. At this stage, it's like four in the afternoon and I still haven't had lunch. <laughs> but... Hopefully, I can, um, <laughs> hopefully we can finish it out before too long. So there's a Pokemon Catcher, but what does my opponent go at? I suppose that's Striker really, isn't it? But now my opponent's using Intrepid Sword, and now that's basically game. Because now I can just manually retreat my Jinx. I can then even Ordinary Rod the energy back in, so I'm not really losing any energy. I can take a KO with Spiritomb. Should not have put that Spiritomb active incidentally. That was a bad idea. Because that's the only one that's got a... Um, it's the only one that's got a... Whatchamacallit on? Hustle Belt. But it's also the only one that's got energy. And I had to use my energy to retreat Jinx. So no, I didn't want to put that Spiritomb active. But I had no choice. Because I'm only allowed to attach one energy per turn. Sad. But that's the way it goes, ladies and gentlemen. That's the way it goes. So now we can play our Ordinary Rod. Get a couple of Pokemon back. Just in case my opponent tries any Pokemon Catcher tricks. And then we don't need to Building Spike. We just Anguish Cry. And if we do need five damage counters on it, the Jinx on the bench will do it. So there's a couple different ways to win here. We can Fione, and my opponent has to put up a single prize Pokemon and then boss's orders. We can double boss's orders. The one thing I feel fairly confident about is that we're not going to even... And we can two-hit KO to Zashin if we want to, to be fair. At this stage, my opponent's taking one prize per KO, and they got five prizes left. And I've got the option of getting a one-hit KO on that to Dene. So... I feel very good about this matchup. And game two really was a turning point. And the... I know my opponent hasn't drawn well this game. I understand that. But this game, I set up well. And I feel like even if my opponent had had a good start, there is a decent chance I could have turned it around. That I would still have been able to get a victory here. So, we are benching a Drillber, I think. That's for Dedene. I know that Spiritomb can be awkward with damage and all of that. So what I'm basically doing here is popping a Drillber down and going, look, if I evolve this, it's smashing your Dedene, so we're good. Now, we've got the boss's orders, but we don't want to use the boss's orders. Doesn't do anything for us at this stage. We don't want to take the Dedene down this turn, because if we take Dedene down this turn, then we potentially have to go through that Zashian. And we don't want to go through the Zashian. We want to ignore the Zashian. So now, I mean, 
we've got game essentially oh not quite wait no not quite if my opponent KOs the bent spirit tomb with a hustle belt on and I don't draw another one I don't have game oh there we go that was the right play and now I either need a hustle belt or I need an Excadrill, and then I will have game. Now, I'm just checking. I've got two Excadrill left in my deck and one Hustle Belt. But bearing in mind, there's also Pokemon Search that will get me the Excadrill. So at this stage, it's purely down to what gives me the best chance. And the great news is... Uh, yeah. Now... We're doing a bit of digging here. We're going to go... I mean, this is a Dedenne turn. This is definitely a Dedenne turn. I mean, to be fair, we don't need to win the game right here. But we don't want to give our opponent a chance to keep putting up Zashin that we can't one-hit KO, etc. Now, one thing I can do here is actually attach the Rainbow Energy to Drillbur. And then move the damage over to Spiritomb. And then use Building Spite. So then it would be a five damage... Spiritomb, and I wouldn't even need to, I wouldn't even need to uh, attach the rainbow energy to it. Now, I'm just double checking the HP here, being a little bit paranoid. Just making sure I do need the five, the five damage on. But again, I put the rainbow energy on Drillbur, and if I need the extra damage on Spiritomb, I can move it over using Jinx. So I can have a five energy Spiritomb if I need it. But there is the Excadrill. That's everything we need to figure out the game. And I'm actually going on to day two or week two. I'm actually moving into the top 64. Thank you to my opponent for being a good sport and being awesome. I did not feel confident about this matchup. And I am well aware that I got lucky game three and my opponent had an extremely bad start. But I still consider that game two to be one of the best games I've played in a long time. I think the strategy was very, very sound. So I'm delighted. I'm going to be back next weekend. No, I'm not going to be streaming next weekend. But I will be recording and I will be uploading after the fact. Because I need to concentrate. My first game next week, if anyone's wondering, is against a Pikachu and Zekrom build. They do play a Zerkatry. But let's just say I have got at least seven different ways of dealing with Zerkatry. So, yes, Zerkatry blocks special energy and I play a lot of special energy. But believe me, I have got so... Well, you've seen my deck list. I have got so many ways around Zerkatry that that does not worry me. Of course, I have taken a loss. That means that if I lose once next week, I'm out. So I'm going to have to go either 3-0 or 4-0 in order to make it to top 16 in Europe and be playing in two weeks' time. I've got a chance. I like my deck. But as you've seen, if you've watched all of these games, we've had bad draws, we've had bad luck, we've had bad play, we've had bad clicks. There are a million different things that can go wrong. But we are moving on. I am delighted. And I'll be back in about a week to show you how that went. For now, comment, like, subscribe, all that usual stuff. Look after yourselves till next time. My name is Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio. Bye!